following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Sacrament of priesthood. The word uh, priest comes from Greek presbyteros, which means an elder in a church. Those who devotee themselves to the sacraments are the ones that are called priests. In other words, those who devote themselves to the practice, to the service or sacrifice of the sacred amens. The sacraments of priesthood relate to Tifereth, which is the sixth, the sixth uh, sephira of the tree of life, <coughs> related with the heart. These uh, sacraments were instituted by Jesus Christ, who relates to our nous atom in the left ventricle of our heart. The Eucharistic priesthood was instituted at the Last Supper. The first initiates who received the power of Eucharistic priesthood were his apostles. After that, his apostles anointed other initiates. Jesus said to his apostles, after uh, he resurrected, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The three amens. Keter, Chokma, Bina. Related with the first triangle of the tree of life. Teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. This is quoted from Matthew uh, chapter 28, 19 to 20 verses. Thus, it is required that all of those who, in the Gnostic Church, are to be ordained as priests or priestesses, must undergo the previous sacraments in some years of studies of Kabbalah and alchemy for their spiritual formation. Let me read for you what is written in the Sohar related with this statement of priesthood. The Sohar states, After washing himself with water, which means the priesthood of Yesod, because remember that we always state that the waters are always related with Mem and that Mem, that symbolizes the water, is related with Yesod, the sexual creative waters. So, 
Sohar says, after washing himself with water, though he is occupied in the Torah, which means in the service, in the priesthood, the Neshama is not kept in its place, nor rules men, only the power of the blood alone does, which is called Nefesh, the animal soul. The Nefesh, the animal soul, always saturates the blood, as we already explained. We name here Neshama. In Kabbalah, we always state that there are three souls, Nefesh, Ruach, and Neshama. Nefesh is the animal soul. But when we talk about Neshama, it is related with the, the soul related with Gebura, superior Sephira related with the soul, the human soul or the divine soul. So, what the Zohar is stating here is that when we are performing the priesthood of Yesod, which is the sexual magic, the priest is, also, is only relating this action with Nefesh, which is the animal soul, as we explain in other lectures, which is related with the lower uh, abdomen, with the liver and the sexual organs. But, said the Zohar, when a man prays in the priesthood of Hod, related with the heart, which in this case, you know, praying is always related with the heart, with Tifereth. So when we are praying, we are performing another type of priesthood, which is in relation with the heart, directly connection with what we call communion, with our own particular spirit. So when we are doing that, we are performing this priesthood of Hod, worshiping our master. Then the power of the blood resumes its place, and the power of Neshama is strengthened through the heart. <coughs> So it settles in that place in the body, which is the heart. Then, through the priesthood of Hod, a man is properly perfected before his master or his inner master. The Nefesh below and the inner master, the Neshama above, are perfected. In other words, if you remember that in other lectures we have stated that these three sephiroth below in the Bible are called Hesed, Abraham, Gebura, Isaac, Tifereth, Jacob, which are the three parts of our own particular inner most, our inner monad. So in Gebura, we find that uh, uh, name in the Bible, which is Isaac, the son of Abraham. This Isaac is in relation with Neshama. And is in relation, of course, with the development of the blood in the liver, as we explained previously. Because the liver is that organ related with Gebura that creates the blood that unfortunately is, is mingled with impure impurities that we have from inheritance from our parents. Because remember that we take the blood from our mother and also the blood related with our protoplasmic bodies of our parents past, animal past. So in the blood, through the liver, we have all of those impurities that the Bible calls 
Ezau, Isaac, which is Geburah, had two sons. The first one is called Esau, and this means a hairy, a hairy one. According to the Bible, Esau was particularly different from Jacob, that was the second son. Both were twins. So Jacob and Esau, the difference is that Esau was red, like the blood, and hairy, like an animal. But Jacob was not. So this is a secret precisely uh, in the Bible about the two children of Isaac, which is Geburah, related with the liver. Because according to the Bible, it states that they live, especially Esau, in the kingdom of Edom. Edom is a word that means red and is related to the blood because in Hebrew talet mem dam means blood so the kingdom of Edom is precisely the blood and it's very interesting to see that Edom is also written with the same letters that you use in order to write Adam the only difference is the accent or the Aleph, the first letter. Adam, Edom. This is it. But it's the same letters. That's why we always state that this Adam, the man into the image of God, is related with the blood. But the first one that comes from Isaac is Esau. And this Esau, of course, is red and hairy, meaning that is the first outcome in the body of our inheritance. And that's why it is written in the Bible that Esau carries the inheritance, the birthright of Isaac. But after him comes Jacob. And the Bible and Kabbalah re, uh, refers to Jacob, to Tifereth. That's why it is said that Jacob is actually the one that receives the power of Isaac. But Esau sells his uh, birthright to Jacob for a dish of blood. I mean, he was cooking meat making that because the meat is the red, the element fire. And he sells his first right to Jacob. But how is this happening? If you observe your body, you will understand that the heart receives impure blood and sends pure blood. The heart is that organ in our organism which deals with two forces, positive and negative. Evil and good. The good, of course, is that oxygen blood, oxygenated blood, that purifies all the cells. While the blue is the one that has impurities. As you know, the function of the heart. All the blood without oxygen goes all to all the cells of the human organism. And after that returns into the heart... The heart receives it and pump it into the lungs. The lungs expel the air. You know, when we ex expel air, we expel the impurities, which is called the carbon uh, monoxide, right? That is the impurities of the air. And we bring the oxygen, which is called neshama in the Bible, the breath of God that enters into the lungs purifies the impure blood and returns, returns it into the heart that again the heart pumps into all the organism. That purified blood is Jacob. He's been born here. But as you see, both are related with the blood. 
Jacob and Esau. That's why it is said that the liver, that the blood from the liver and all the organs that create the digestive system that create the blood, do not know how to uh, differentiate or how to deal with good and evil. You don't know. They don't know. The only organ or gland that knows about good and evil is a heart. Because it takes the, the evil impurities or negative impurities, purifies it, and sends it. Hmm? That's the only organ that does it. That's why when we talk about Esau and Jacob, according to the Bible, in symbology we're talking about the two types of blood that our physical body creates. And that's why Master Jesus says <coughs> fornication adultery, thievery, crimes, hatred, all of that comes from the heart. People say, how come in the heart we have this more noble organ related with love? Well, but the heart takes all the impurities of the body related with all, all that ancient animal past, which is nefesh. And from there is where people take all that animal aspect, animal things that express through the word, through the mouth. But from the heart also comes the good things. Because the oxygen, oxygenated blood is the, the blood that contains the breath of God, which in Sanskrit is called the Akasha, the Akashic breath that acts precisely in the moment when you are performing the sexual act, the Akashic breath enters through your nose, to the nostrils, goes down to the cord, the, uh, the spinal column, and uh, touches the sexual energy. That's the breath of God. So when you breathe in in the sexual act and you transmute your sexual energy, you are working, listen carefully, you are working only with nefesh. But God, the breath of God, is helping you to transmute your sexual energy. That's the priesthood of Yesod. So in the process of creating the vehicles that the priest needs in order to be a servant of God, he does it through the sexual transmutation, the priesthood of Yesod. But, as, as you know, the bodies always are always mingled with uh, the impurities that we have from our animal past. That's why we have the karma that enters to the liver. We have our karma in the astral body and the mental body. That is what is called the common and ordinary karma, which is related with our animal past. So, <coughs> the first son of Isaac, which is Esau, refers to that first impurity. And that's why when we talk about Esau, we talk about the mind. Esau, according to the Bible, was a hunter of animals. That means that all that inheritance from the animal kingdom, those animals that hunt for other creatures in order to survive, is in our blood and is in our internal bodies as well. Because the three brains which are related with the three sephirat, Yesod, Hod, and Netzah, which is sex, heart, and the head, are related, of course, with Esau. Because that's the power that we use, the power of the blood in order to create Adam. But this Adam, in the beginning, is not Adam, it's Edom. So the kingdom of Edom is the kingdom of the blood that goes from the physical body 
to the astral body, to the mental body. And that is what the Apostle Paul called the earthly men, the terrestrial men, that even though has solar bodies, is still terrestrial and connected to the animal aspect, that is Isaú. And has the first right, the inheritance, right? Because was born. But Jacob is the causal body. The body that we create after the mental body. That uh, uh, mental body, which is Esau, uh, I mean the, the, the mental superior body, which is Tifereth, is the one that comes after Esau. That's why you say that the firstborn is Esau. is the first man, the first mind, right? And the second one is Jacob, which is his twin. And that is what we call the superior mind, Tifereth. So in the process of creation of the true human being in the organism, first comes Esau and then Jacob. That's why they're called the twins. But Esau is concerned with the concrete mind, with hunting uh, of titles, hunting of uh, uh, fame, etc. While is, uh, uh, Jacob, which is Tifereth, is only related with praying to the Lord, everything concerned with him. And that's why Tifereth, which is Jacob, receives the first right, the inheritance of, of Esau, because Esau sells it easily. He wants just fame in the world. Give me money or give me this, uh, this dish. I don't care. And take my birthright. <coughs> and how is Jacob doing that? Well, if you study the circulatory system, you understand that the impure blood is Esau. And the pure blood is Jacob. So this is how the change of the inheritance happens in your heart. And this is how Jacob, in our heart, works very hard in order to purify our impurities. You understand? You get it? That is in relation with Esau and Jacob. And everybody, when you enter into this path, you will create both men, Esau and Jacob, within. But you have to fight against the kingdom of Edom, says the Bible. That kingdom is the blood. When you have your, and the whole work, when you have your impurities, the whole work is related with the blood. Because through the blood, we receive the strength of God. And through the blood, we purify ourselves with the priesthood. And this is precisely the main thing here. The priesthood of Jacob is very important. The priesthood of Jacob is a priesthood of the heart. Even though he works also with a stone. But he fights against Samael. As you remember in the Bible, Jacob fights against the forces of the sex, which is Samael, and conquers it. And overcomes it. By the heart. So that's why the priesthood of Hod, which is also related with the heart, was instituted by the Master Jesus and by all the avatars and messengers. Because through the Eucharist is how we receive directly the breath of God without impurities. And this is the main thing that we have to understand here. When we work in the priesthood of Hod, with the riches of the heart, with the Last Supper, we are bringing into our heart the very pure atoms of Christ, the Glorian, Avalokiteshvara. And those 
forces settled. This is what they call neshama. That's a heart called neshama, settled in their heart. In order to fight against Edom, your impurities, your ego. This is very important to understand because on this is based the, the priesthood, the sacrament of priesthood. So, the Last Supper is written like this. The Master Samael states, the Last Supper, the priesthood of Hod, is a magical ceremony with tremendous power. Something very similar to the archaic ceremony of the Blood Brotherhood. The tradition of this brotherhood indicates that if two or more persons mix their blood in a cup and they, they drink of it, they remain brothers through the blood eternally. Thus, the astral vehicles of these people become intimately associated for all eternity. The Hebrew people attribute to the blood characteristics of a very special type, as we explained already. The Last Supper was a ceremony of blood. Each of the apostles brought drops of his own, of his own blood in their cups and they emptied them into the chalice of Jesus the Christ. The Beloved had also placed his own royal and repeated in all the seven great cosmic planes. The ritual ceremony established the secret canal from the physical region passes through all the seven great planes to the world of the solar logos. When we are performing this ritual, the Eucharist begins from the physical body. But of course, the priest and the priestess who are performing that are performing the priesthood of Yesod in privacy. Because the priesthood of, of, of Hod is public in group, but the priesthood of Yesod is private. It's between men and women, husband and wife. They transmute their blood and flesh. That is related with what we call the circumcision. Not the circumcision of the flesh purely in the physical body, but the circumcision of the transmutation. When you transmute the blood of nefesh, the animal soul. So the priests and priestess that are performing this ritual of Hod, they are now bringing through their vehicles physical bodies, through the seven bodies. Yesod, Hon, Nechat, Tiferet, Geburah, Hesed, directly into the solar logos. As we explain in the lectures, Tiferet, the human soul, which in this case is Jacob, is bringing through his ritual directly that the sacrifice of Jacob, the forces of Aleph, the breath of God, the neshama of God, into the wine and into the bread. And of course, through this way, he puts in his heart the energy of God and purifies the blood, fights against Esau, the mind, which is the problem. The problem is always the mind. And in the heart, of course, we have, as I said, Jacob. The Christic atoms of the solar logos descend through this canal and thus accumulate in the bread and the wine. This is what is called the Eucharist. This is how the bread and wine really change into the flesh and blood of, of the cosmic Christ through the work of the transubstantiation. This is something that people ignore. The transubstantiation is a marvelous work of magic. Remember that mag means priest. But for that, in order to perform that, you have to perform, of course, the previous sacraments. In order to bring that and to be a channel. This is called Tifereth. 
Upon eating the bread and drinking the wine, the Christic atoms fuse with our organism and pass through the internal bodies to awaken in us the powers of their, of, uh, their solar nature. The apostles drank the blood of the Christ and ate the flesh of the Christ. And this is written in Luke chapter 22, verse 14 to 20, that says, and when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I said unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I said unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This is this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup of the supper saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Notwithstanding, for its completion, the priesthood as a sacrament is related with the fulfillment of the other sacraments. Thus, it begins with the sacrament of baptism or transmutation of the sexual waters of Yesod through the sexual cross which endows Tiferet with the power of Jehovah, or better said, Jehovah, the Holy Spirit. This is symbolized in the baptism of Jesus in the temple of John the Baptist, located at the river Jordan, as is specified in the Bible. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water and lo, the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So this is the way in which we start our priesthood with baptism with our own sexual waters. And this is related with what is written in Isaiah. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delighted. That soul is Neshama. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. And also in the Psalms, the sound this the psalms too this is written i will declare the decree jehovah hath said unto me thou art my son this day have i begotten thee and that's why in uh, in the psalms 110 is stated jehovah has shown and will not repent Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Which is also related in Hebrews chapter 5. So the, priest of, the priesthood of Melchizedek that we are talking here is related with the baptism. This is how you start. We, here we are not talking about the symbol or symbolical baptism that you receive in the church. No. We are talking here the baptism that you perform as a married couple. With the transmutation of the sexual energy. That's the first action of the priesthood. The transmutation. With the Glorian Aleph, which is the forces of the, the first triangle, as you remember, this Aleph here, is related with Keter, Chokmah, Binah, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
That is the breath of God that comes from above and enters to your nostrils. That is the neshama of God. That is the Akashic breath. During the priesthood of Yesod, the Akashic breath penetrates through, the, through our nasal cavities and descends through the spinal column, the staff of Aaron, which is related with the letter Vav in our sexual organs. There, the breath of God transforms itself into our living creative waters, into the wine of the spirit that is sublimated to the brain. Through this practice, the priest and priestess reject their passional, lustful atoms of Lilith and Nahema. If these passional atoms of Lilith and Nahema attempt to ascend upwardly towards the head, then they are violently rejected by the breath of God, by Neshama, by the Akashic breath. That's why if you commit the mistake of fornicating in the sexual act, then those forces are rejected. They cannot ascend. Only if you transmute your water into fire or into wine, which is the same thing, which is the matrimony. This is how, through sexual magic, priests and priestess separate their inferior waters from the superior waters. This is how they convert themselves into vehicles of the Christic light. The Akasha is the source of sound, the spiritual basis of sacred mantras, the creative forces of the divine couple. In the throat is the At. As you see here in the tree of life. That's why the necessity of practicing mantras when you are practicing with the transmutation of the sexual energy. So the divine hierarchy is entered through the nose. That's why it is stated in the sacred scriptures that God blew a breath of life into the nose of Adam and he infused his neshama, living soul, into him. You read that in Genesis. It says that God blew his breath in the nose of Adam, and he, become, he became a living soul. But how is this happening? Again, I'll tell you. The oxygen that enters into your blood, that is Adam. That is called Edom, when it's impure. So, that living breath, the Akashic breath, purifies the blood. And then, we have the purified blood, which is Adam. It's no longer Edom, but Adam. The same letters. And that has happened, of course, in an ordinary people. In relation uh, with the physical body, in order to be alive. But in the sexual act, when we breed, we are bringing that breath of God and help us for the transmutation. That's the base of pranayama, and that's the base of uh, sexual magic. Likewise, when we as priests and priestess perform the rituals of Hod, which is the Eucharist, we vocalize certain mantras that have the power to sublimate the sexual energy up to the heart. The internal Christ lives in the heart temple. When the sexual energies are sublimated to the heart, they have the immense joy of mixing with the forces of the internal Christ in order to enter into the superior worlds. Our rituals are repeated in all of the seven great cosmic planes. The ritual ceremony establishes the secret canal from the physical region, passes through all the seven great planes to the world of the solar logos. The Christic atoms of the solar logos descend through this canal and thus accumulate in the bread and wine. 
This is how the bread and wine really changed into the flesh and blood of Christ through the work of transubstantiation. Now it is necessary to understand how the hierarchies work. When we talk about Christ, the breath of God, we always have to put our imagination into the superior triangle, Keter, Chochma, Bina, as we pointed in previous lecture, related with the three dots of the letter Aleph, which symbolizes air, the first triangle. That is Christ, the cosmic Christ, which always descends, of course, into our sexual energy in order to be transmuted, in order to create the solar bodies. But we need that Christ in his purity, without mingling with the impurities of our blood. And the only way to bring the Lord directly, without mixing it with our impurities of our blood, is by doing the Eucharist. But I repeat, we have to perform the sacraments, all the sacraments before, in order to perform the Eucharist. Because he, if a fornicator performs the Eucharist or the ritual of Hod without being in chastity, without previously realizing or walking on the path, he doesn't bring anything. Because Tifereth, remember, Tifereth, we always state, is a priest. And Tifereth is in relation with the heart. And Tifereth is in relation with a human soul, with Jacob, which is the real, the, the real priest that is performing this. That's why the Eucharist was instituted by the Master Jesus, because it's indispensable, necessary. Do you remember that says that Christ erases the sins of the world? That Christ helps us to work against our ego? There are people think that with sexual magic is enough and that we do not need the Eucharist. In other words, they said they don't need Christ. They forgot the statement that Jesus has stated in the Bible. No one, no one goes to the Father but through me. He needs to enter into us in his pure state in order to help us. And enter, of course, as a breath, because when the priest is performing the ritual, he is invoking the forces, the superior forces of Aleph, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to enter into the bread, into the wine. That when we drink it, go directly into the heart and strengthen our own particular individual Neshama, or divine soul, which is the vehicle of Christ which is precisely this Gebura above. Now listen. The Master Jesus, of course, as you know, is an inhabitant of the Absolute. He's beyond Keter. He belongs to the Ain. He's a, he's a Paramarta Satya. Through him, through his mediation, the whole solar force of the Absolute enters into the Tree of Life and through that, through the Last Supper. That's why he instituted 2,000 years ago the ritual of the blood with his Apostles. That we will repeat, of course, by performing with wine and wheat and bread. We repeat that because there is a connection. And there is a connection when we receive the forces of that which are related with the Gnostic Church. But at the end, always, of any root race, as we are right now, always come a great helper. Someone that is really di directly related with the blood. And with all of these that we are explaining. 
And in previous sacraments, we explained is Samael, the Archangel Samael. This Archangel, of course, has his Bodhisattva that came to Mexico to teach the doctrine and establish three chambers. The first, of course, so the three chambers are always related with the three brains because we have three brains. We don't have two brains, we have three. If we reject any chamber, and then we are not working with the three factors, with the three amends that the priest has to work with. And that's why he gave his knowledge related with the intellect written in all of his books. This is knowledge that we need to study because a priest in the public that does not know anything about Kabbalah, about alchemy, what is he going to teach to the souls that are looking for knowledge? And that's why the master wrote with his hands and his fingers swallowed of writing many books because we need information in order to approach the souls. That's why in his library, he had a lot of books. He was reading and studying it in order to study the psyche of the people of the earth and to bring his knowledge. That's why he read many books of great initiates. But these initiates that wrote about in the past, about esotericism, were not at the height of the master Abramento, Jesus Christ, nor at the height of a self-realized master. Madame Blavatsky wrote a lot. Rudolf Steiner wrote a lot. And many other great writers, initiates, but with many mistakes. Because they were not at that level of Christ. Samael is one of the spirits before the throne of God. It's a servant of the Master Jesus of Nazareth. And he came in order to perform this, and now he is a mediator between the earth, Malkut, and between the superior forces that are commanded by Jesus of Nazareth. Who is he? Many times he repeated and said, I am that archangel, that angel, related with the book of Revelation which is later in the uh, chapter 19, verse 9 to 16, which is written as follows. And he said unto me, this is how the chapter 16 begins, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true saints of God. Who is the marriage supper of the Lamb? What is that? The marriage supper of the Lamb, the Lamb, of course, is the Lamb of God, is Christ, is related with the Asod and with the heart. These rituals of Hod. Why? Because Samael is written. He says, And I saw heaven opened. To the pineal gland, of course, in the head is how we see this, the, the heaven open. And behold, a white horse, the Akashic waters. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. The only one that makes war and is related with righteousness and with karma is Geburah. And the one that rules Geburah is Samael. So Samael above is that one that makes war and, and does with righteousness. And that's why Samael rules Aries. Aries is related with the head. In the head we have the three atoms. The atom of the father in the root of the nose. The atom of the son in the pituitary gland. And the atom of the Holy Spirit in the pineal gland. That's the head. And Samael rules that head. And that's why when we are performing the ritual of Hoth, we are bringing that force of Samael into the ritual. The cosmic Christ. 
we're talking here about Samael, the Logos, because another thing is the Bodhisattva. That's why it's written. His eyes were as a flame of fire, because he is a genie of the fire. Red with the blood, the blood is a fire. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Many crowns, because this archangel, Samael, is the head of the ray of power, the ray of Mars. And under his command are many crowns, in other words, many keters, many servialized masters that belong to that ray. That's why in his head, in his command, there are many crowns, many monads, in other words, if we want to understand. And he was clothed with a vesture deep in blood. Do you understand that? I said Geburah is in relation with the liver. The liver creates the blood. The blood is purifying the heart. So his vesture, of course, is in relation with the blood because he works through the blood. I, we explained that in other lectures. And his name is called the War of God. We explain in other lectures that that War of God, which is Hashem, the name, yod he vav he enters through the blood into the sexual organs. So that war of God is what he says. This is on the or. This is, now we are talking about Samael on the or. On in Hebrew means sexual strength, sexual potency. The or means in light. So that's why he says that he's hidden in the word of God, his name on the or. Because the strength of the sexual organ is precisely nefesh within which Hashem, the Word of God, as we explain in the other sacraments, is hidden. So through the blood is how the impurities come into us, and through the blood is how the breath of God comes into us as well, and crystallizes in the sexual energy. And that's why it is written that it says that in that uh, verse, and the armies which were in heaven, the masters, follow him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, because they are the outcome of the transmutation of the sexual energy, of chastity, as we explained. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. You see, the tongue in the Kabbalah symbolizes Bab. The throat is that by the union of the two superior forces Ava and Aima come Vav, Yod He Vav, which is a tongue and expresses the word. That's why it says that the word of God, the Logos, is Vav, is Tifereth. And this is how wisdom is expressed through the tongue above in heaven. And with it, with the word, with his knowledge, it should smite the nations because it speaks the truth and explains everything related with the mystery of Christ. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. That rod, of course, is a rod of chastity. And he treadeth, treadeth, he treadeth the wine press. In the previous lecture, the speaker explained what is the wine press. That in Yesod, we press with the sexual magic and we transmute the wine. That wine press, of course, is Yesod. So he, Samael, also is in Yesod. And we explain that Samael rules the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio rules the sexual organs. Samael is the king there. So that's why it's written there that he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of and wrath of Almighty God. 
who is Almighty God. Almighty God in Hebrew is El Shaddai. And that's the second name in Jesod of God. So the whole verses are pointing directly to Samael that rules Arias in Jesod, whose vesture is deep in blood. That only with the eyes of the Spirit can you see that clearly. So when we work in sexual magic, Samael is there and is working with us. That's why the Master says, when you practice sexual magic, invoke me. I will help you. But don't spill, because then karma will fall on you, because I also gebura. Don't forget that. And I am also helping you in the priesthood of Hod. You want my help? Perform the priesthood of Hod. Because then my father, who is the one that do the work, that I am just a vehicle, will descend into your heart and help you. And it helped Jacob in order to work against Esau, who is mingled with me in Jesod. Do you see that? Clearly, Esau is mingled with Samael in Jesod because related to the impurity of Geburah in the liver. But we can bring Samael in his purity as a warrior in our heart when we work with Jacob, when we work with Tifereth, when we work with Hod. That's the priesthood. That's why we have to understand that when we talk about the priesthood, we are talking about Hod, Netzah, and Yesod. About the priesthood of Netzah, I'm not going to touch it because that's related with the lecture of uh, the Holy uh, Extreme Ancient in which you work with Netzah. But here I'm just touching the priesthood of Hod and Yesod, which are intimately related with the Red Christ. I don't know if you heard, but Samael is called the Red Christ of Aquarius. What do you think is called red? Because red is the color of the blood, and he works through the blood. In Tifereth or in Yesod. Samael is also called red because iron is red, which is mainly vibrating when you see Mars in the night. You see that red planet blinking, that red planet called Mars has a lot of iron in, in his uh, inner uh, minds. That's why it's red. And because the one that is controlling that mass of a planet is the logo Samael, is, is they call the Fohat, the fire Samael. It's not a person, it's a logos. So in the priesthood, we have to bring the forces of Samael in Hod. Therefore, those that pronounce against the riches of Hod are pronouncing themselves against Christ and against Samael. The marriage, uh, the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's why it says, and that's uh, come to the marriage supper of the Lamb. So the Mary Supper of the Lamb, of course, as I repeat, is related uh, with the Assad and with Hod. Because the marriage is in relation with the heart and with the sex. A priesthood that is not based on that is a false priesthood. And that's why now related with the liver. Behold here the liver. Talking about the liver in relation with the Last Supper as well. It's written in John chapter 19, verse 34. But one of the soldiers which has, uh, with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. You read that many times. People think that the soldier pierced the heart. No. 
the organ that Longinus pierced in the side of Jesus is exactly here in the right side. The big organ that is in the side is called the liver. Because the whole work, when you perform completely all the work, the liver shows that. From the liver comes blood, pure blood, and water. It's no longer impure. But that happens when he is on the cross. Do you realize that? He is on the cross, nailed, pierced by the nails and by, and by, the, pier, uh, by the spear. And it is written that Joseph of Arimathea collected the blood of Jesus that came from that wound in the Holy Grail. That's a beautiful symbol. So the whole mass of the priesthood, the Eucharist, is related with that wound. That's why in many pictures they, 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 they paint the priest receiving the blood from the liver of Jesus that is dead on the cross. That's a great sacrifice. Because through the cross, you make the sacrifice of annihilating your ego, your animal ego. And with the help of the heart, of course, you do, you do it. And then the, the sacrifice is written, that's why it's written in Sahariah, chapter 12, verse 10. It's written that, that. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourned for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn that is the prophecy of Zechariah, which is explained like this. And I will pour upon the house. When you talk in Kabbalah about the house of David, who is David? David is a king, right? Tifereth is related with the Malachim. David is the king of Israel. Because Israel is Jacob, right? Jacob is Israel. And Israel is in relation with the forces of the heart. So the king of Israel is David. Means he's related with the, with the heart. But what is, where is the house of David? The house of David is the physical body. Because the heart is the main thing, the altar. But the whole body is the house of David. So when you talk about the house of David, it's Malkut. So in other words, it says, I will bring upon Malkut the physical body, the house of David, which is Tiferet, and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, which are those who share the forces of the ritual, who are there sharing the forces of the ritual. If you eat the wine and the bread of the lamb, then you bring those forces of the Lord into your home, into your house. That is the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me, whom they have pierced. In other words, they have, and they will look upon the cross. Because in, on the altar of the old Gnostics, present Gnostics, and all the Gnostics of all the times, you saw with the symbol of the cross, the crucified, which is scandal, the fanatics. Why you put the, uh, uh, the cross on the altar? Because that's the symbol of the one that they pierced. Through the, through the work that we do. We see the one that appears, which is the Christ. Because the crucified one on the cross symbolizes the Christ. Pierced by the nails and pierced by the spear. Which brings the pure blood of Christ on the altar. And that's why this is the, the, the prophecy of Sahariah. And they shall mourn. Etc. As we already read. That's why in the beginning. When this was being spread. In the, in the, oh, the Holy Land. 
they were uh, for scandal because they said they, they shouldn't worship idols. But we were not worship idols because that symbol symbolizes the forces of Christ descending. Because Jesus of Nazareth is a vehicle of the Lord, is a paramartha satya. And that symbol also symbolizes the Christ doing the sacrifice and all of those that know the mystery of priesthood. And the house, which is Malkut, is the house of Melchizedek. You know that the genie of the earth, is, his name is Melchizedek. We live in his body. And that's why Jesus says that he is a priest according with the order of Melchizedek. Because everybody that do the work that we are performing of Hod, he's doing it, or they are doing it, thanks to Jesus. But in the body of Melchizedek, which is Malkut, the planet Earth. And that's why Melchizedek was given the blood and water, wine and bread, to Abraham in the past in Genesis. Because he is the one that rules all the priests. Whether they are Jews, whether they are Christian, they are Gnostic, they are, whether they are Hindus, the, whether they are Tibetans, doesn't matter who. As long as they are doing the work that we are explaining here of chastity, of the sacraments, they become priests according to the order of Melchizedek, the king of the earth. So priests and priestess are initiates who are devoted to the self-realization of the three primary forces and who love their neighbor as themselves. Priests are connected to the Gnostic Church to their ordination so that they can preside over the sacraments, mainly the Eucharist and the sacraments of extreme unction. Gnostic priests and priestesses are called to look after the spiritual well-being of neophytes and to teach the Gnostic doctrine to them. Priesthood is only for initiates who are anointed by God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, if one wants to be a priest, one must fulfill the previous six sacraments, which are the way of priesthood, because the priesthood is a gift of the Holy Ghost, which is the sexual energy. In Hebrews, is written, the chapter 5. No one takes this honor upon himself. This honor is granted and given by God, the Holy Spirit. Just as he granted the honor to Aaron, likewise Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest. But the Father said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And also, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. So that is precisely the priesthood of Melchizedek. Even though the pressure of the Akashic breath, the Neshama of God, causes the ego to crumble away. When you take the bread and wine into your body, the ego crumble away. Because the ego cannot deal with the forces of Christ of the ritual. And that's why we bring it, because we want to fight against it. That's why it is written. Here we can now, here we can now begin to understand what disorder and order are. Christ, through Hod, establishes order within our hearts by means of the Eucharist and thus reject the disorderly house. In one of the rituals of ancient Egypt is written the following uh, phrase that explains how Christ, which is in his house, Malkut, the physical body, organized the psyche and become and establish an order. Because each one of us is a disorderly house, completely. We are a mess. Tifereth is a prophet of Ra Horku. In the Book of the Dead, always read Ra Horku. Who is Ra Horku? Ra, as we explain, 
in the solar ains of ore, the fire of Christ. Her is a variation of Horus. And who is Horus? Horus is the son of Isis and Osiris, which is Tiferet. And Ku, in Egyptian language, is the causal body. So the prophet of Ra, Horus Ku, or Ra Horku, is the priest that is performing the ritual of Hod. That's the prophet of Ra Horku, or Ra, Ra Horus Ku. Remember, the Ku is the causal body. Horus is the son of man, united with Chokhmah. And Ra is the cosmic Christ. This is Ra Horku. And Ra Horku said this and wrote this in the Book of the Dead. I shall relieve you from the obstruction of the disorderly house. Thus, I shall take you to the triumphant city, which is Jerusalem. The disorderly house is the physical body, our psyche, which in the beginning is without form and empty. But Christ makes order in the disorderly house through the ritual that we little by little take and work with it through all our life. Disorder is anarchism. It is true nature. Anarchism comes from Greek, anarchons meaning no archons, no government, no authority, no leader, no Christ. That's disorder. And that is called a simoniac. And here is precisely the important thing, talking about the simoniac. A simoniac is a Gnostic anarchist. Listen carefully what I'm saying here. Because many writers of esotericism think and thought that Simon the Magus, Simon the Magician, was an Gnostic. Yeah, but anarchist. Because he never accepted Christ. And that's why we place in the website the Acts of Peter and Paul that you should read in order to understand who is Simon the Magician. So, a Gnostic anarchist is the one that does not accept the authority of Christ. Simoniac states the following. Practice the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness and do not follow anyone. Yet, they intentionally forget the statement of Master Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. So, simoniacs always pronounce themselves uh, against Christ. Whether directly saying that you shouldn't transmit your sexual energy, or by saying that the rituals of Hod crumble away the ego, which is true, because the rituals of Hod are against the ego, are against Esau. Is a work that Christ does in order to help us because we have to die. But those simoniacs, they awake the terrestrial men, Esau, and take over them. That's why the Master Samael stated. In the three mountains. In the name of the truth, I want you to know that when the eye is dissolved, the mind, Esau, remains instead. Indubitably, this was the causa causorum of my fall in the third mountain. He said that specifically because the mind is precisely 
the vehicle that Simon the Magician couldn't control. Simon the Magician, because of pride, became a black magician. In the beginning, Simon the Magician was doing the work. The master explains that in the book uh, Sexual Alchemy, Treatise of Sexual Alchemy. He says, Simon the Magician is completely chaste. How do you understand that? Meaning that they know about sexual transmutation, but they reject the hierarchy. They ignore that the hierarchy, as the Master Samael explains in the Ignis Rose, descends through the Akashic breath into your nostrils. Descends through the Akashic breath in the ritual of Hod. That's the hierarchy. And in this day and age, the hierarchy is working through Samael. So if you reject the rituals of Hod, you are against Samael. If you are rejecting sexual magic, you are against Samael. But let us say that you practice sexual magic, but you reject the hierarchy, and you said, I will do my work by my own. I don't need the help of Samael on Beor. And then you are becoming a demoniac because the Christic cosmic forces of Christ are working in this day and age through Samael. And this is something that you have to understand. That's why he says that he is the avatar. He is a messenger. He is the vehicle. So we need to study his doctrine in order to follow the path because this is how the hierarchy is. Otherwise, we create disorder. And if we stop state like certain Gnostic organization that says only five books are enough, they are pronouncing themselves against Samael Aleph, the word, the sword that wrote the books for all of us. All the books of Samael were written for us, are the work of the cosmic Christ through him for us. And he is working through the rituals of the priesthood of God for us. So if we reject that, even if we are completely chased as Simon the Magician, we become black magicians of the mind, which are the most dangerous. Because it is written, the Master Samael says, When we attentively study the books of Simon the Magician, apparently there is nothing that can be condemned as black magic. Evilness is so fine in the world of the mind. Evilness is so delicate and subtle in the plane of cosmic understanding that in reality, a lot of intuition, that is in relation with the heart, is needed in order not to be cheated by the demons of the mental world. All of those demons are fully awakened. They go in the astral plane, they know astral projection. So don't be fooled, I said, oh, you have to learn astral projection. I astral projection myself every day, consciously. So what? Simon the Magician had those powers and more. And they knew how to astral project themselves. The black magicians are millions of times more fine and delicate in the mental plane than the black magicians of the astral plane, what the Master Samael says. So what is the black magic if they are chaste? Dante Alighieri explains the black magic of Simon the Magician is that he remained looking toward the past and he did not want to accept Christ or the new Christic current. This is the rebellion against the divine hierarchies. And in fact, Simon the Magician remains situated in the world of black magic. Whosoever attentively studies the teachings of Simon the Magician will discover that Simon the Magician never speaks a word in favor of Christ. So we have to understand that because the forces of any avatar, the forces of the cosmic rights work always in the three brains, not only in the sexual brain. And in the heart is precisely when we've had faithfulness. So to pronounce ourselves against the rituals of Hod is pronounce ourselves against Christ. 
becoming an awakened Simon the Magician. In that way, Simon used his mind to condemn others as traitors of his Gnosis in order to get powers within the anarchistic, his, his anarchistic Gnosticism, which was masquerading as a true Gnosis of God. So see, that was what happened in the time of Jesus. From the beginning of the Gnosis of Jesus, after he died and left, then appears Simon the Magician, saying that he is Christ and forming anarchism. And he, of course, was a disciple, a Gnostic disciple, from the beginning. And when, that's why the Romans believed that he was a master. And of course, because he was teaching Gnosis. And in this day and age also, you find a lot of people that goes and makes a lot of websites and claim that they are Gnosis. But if you are not following the rules or the hierarchy that comes, the new Christic current, that this Christic current I explained to you is through the blood, is through the rituals, is through the practices that, was, that were brought by Master Samael on the Or. Hmm? Yeah, it is in the moment, never in the past. All of these Gnostics that are identified with the past, they want to worship idols and worship those that, tra that, that betray the Christ. As Simon the Magician did it at that time, the, the, the force is always repeated by reoccurrence. Many Gnostics that do the same thing. So remember, don't get cheated by Simon the Magician, which in this day and age are many. Simoniacs that appears there in the state that they are following Master Samael. Meanwhile, they are adulterating his doctrine with other doctrines, with spiritism, with channeling, with mediumism. And they are, of course, sometimes rejecting uh, this Gnostic that says that only five books are necessary. They are rejecting the doctrine. So they are adulterating the doctrine as well. They are simoniacs. The mind is the vehicle that we have to control. So these are the mysteries of the Gospels that must be lived here and now within ourselves. This is what the Master Samael said. The life, passion, and death of our Lord Jesus Christ is not something that is strictly historic, as people believe. It is something of immediate actuality that each one must perform in his or her laboratory. This is what the crude reality of Christ is. It is not something from the history of the past that occurred 2,000 years ago. It is something to be lived here and now. I give testimony of this because I am living all of this. In this precise moment, 1977, my interior profound Lord Samael is in his holy sepulcher. And in the year 1978, my interior profound Lord Samael will resurrect in me and I in him in order to perform the gigantic work that must be made for humanity. Christ will be the one to perform it, not my insignificant person who is nothing but an instrument. This is what the Master Samael said. So we are to turn ourselves according to the rules to the forces of, uh, of Christ. And remember, Samael helped us in sexual magic and the rituals of Hod. But if we reject the rituals of Hod, we are remain alone. If we think that we are going to do it just by that, we are wrong. 
because no one can go to the Father but through me, said the cosmic Christ. And we need to bring those forces into our heart directly without stains, stains, I mean, without uh, uh, impurities. And that's why we need the sacrament of the Eucharist. And we need the other practices that Matthew Samael gave us in order to help us in the world. Because remember that we had 97% of ego. Those people that walk in evil and for evil, when they receive the forces of the ritual, they feel that they are crumbled away because they are awakening in a negative aspect. And this is how that we have to understand and comprehend. So let me read for you. To end uh, with the lecture, what uh, is written in Joshua, now therefore fear Jehovah and serve him. Remember that Jehovah is Chokhma, the sacred name of God in the Sephira Chuma, which is, is the son. Serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve you Jehovah. And if it seems evil unto you to serve Jehovah, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me, in my home, in my house, I will serve Jehovah. And the people answered and said unto Joshua, God forbid that we should forsake Jehovah, the Christ, to serve other gods. For Jehovah, the Christ, is that that brought up our fathers out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the ways wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. And Jehovah drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites which dwell in the land. Therefore will we also serve Jehovah, for he is Christ. And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve Jehovah, for he is holy, and he is a jealous God. He will not forgive you if you transgress or you sin. But if you forsake Jehovah and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that he had done you good. So remember this, Jehovah is Chokmah that works to the rituals. If we forsake that, if we don't want to do that, well, we are remain alone. And uh, the priesthood is not complete. Because there are seven steps of priesthood that we already explained. The seventh one will be explained in the next lecture. Do you have questions? Yeah, the, the question is, could be the prayers of Jacob fall into Esau and to turn mechanical? Of yeah. course. Remember that Esau is your concrete mind, your terrestrial mind, that is only hunting, looking for titles. While Jacob is Tifred, that is only uh, concerned with the forces of the monad and beyond. But if we, of course, don't do the work consciously, and then that falls into, into Esau and we become mechanical. That's why we have to understand and repeat. When we take the Eucharist of Jacob, of Hod, we have to work in our ego. We have to work against Esau. 
against the kingdom of Edom, which is our blood. Because, unfortunately, we have in our blood our fornication, adultery, crimes, sins. All of that is in our body. The whole work is in this house. Remember that when Christ came into the house of Israel, which is our body, he came with a whip. And whip all the merchants, which are our defects, inside and clean. So that's what we said. When Christ enters into the temple, comes with a whip. The whip is a symbol of willpower, symbol of Tifereth. So when we perform the ritual of Hod, Christ comes with a whip. And whip all the eagles. Get out of the house of my God. Because this physical body, this mind, this heart should be a house of prayer. But you take all the impurities from the liver and turn this physical body in a house of prostitution. So get out. That's willpower. And this is what people do not understand. They want to feel pitchy when they take the Eucharist. No way. The Eucharist comes in order to work against these merchants that are within you. If you reject the Eucharist, of course, you are rejecting the help of Christ. Simple. On that note, you read how the forces of Samael are represented in the book of Revelation, chapter 19. Mm -hmm. Since the death of his physical body, how is Samael helping humanity? Well, as was, I was reading, it says, since the death of the master Samael on the or, how is Samael uh, helping humanity? That's the question. Well, Samael left all of his doctrine written in all of his books. Through that, he's helping humanity. And when the Lord, because he, his Bodhisattva, was pierced, received the same, because we have received the same uh, stigmas in all the bodies in order to purify. So he became one with his father. So now Samael is working through the rituals of Hod in his strength in order to purify. Because Samael has to come inside of us as pure fire, not mingle with the liver, with our impurities. Because mingle with the liver, with our impurities, Samael comes not only in the Gnostics, within everybody. But only those that perform the ritual is how Samael enters in his purity in the heart in order to keep the work of his father, is what he said. Christ will keep the work because I'm just an instrument. And this is especially what we have to understand. Samael is fire that descends in the Eucharist. That's why when you perform the Eucharist, as we explain simple for the single people that still are not in the secret chambers, you just kneel and pray to our Father who are in heaven. And pray for the forces of Samael, the Logos, to descend his purity in the wine and the bread. And after that, eat it. And then Samael will enter into you and to help you in your work against your ego. Against the impurities of your heart. And if you feel, crumble away with those forces, it's because you are full of sins. Full impurity. An initiate that I don't remember who is the name now, I remember that said, that when he took the Eucharist, he was crumbled away by those forces. Of course, he was full of ego. But he specs. Hmm? The Lord was rejecting him because he was full of pride. And the heart never accepted Christ. I mean, the, the, the pride. And it works against the ego. And mainly, if you are awakening in the evil, as Simon the Magician, that was awakened. And of course, it's written there in the website how Peter, who is a faithful apostle of the Lord, bless a loaf of bread like the Eucharist. And when Simon was invoking the demons in order to attack Peter, Peter only showed him the, to the dogs the bread blessed with the forces of Christ. And the dogs disappeared. There you find now why uh, Peter, the apostle, symbolizes PTR, 
the forces of the altar, the forces of Yesod, the forces of the priesthood, which we explained already. Yeah, the question is why the Gnostic students only uh, don't, don't shouldn't intellectualize the knowledge only and forget about meditation. Because the Master says also that we need to meditate and an hour of meditation or vocalization is better than to read many books. Of course, it's true. But the Master also says that we don't have to read his books like newspaper. We have to meditate in it. What do you think my person knows all of this and comprehend all of this because I meditate in what the master writes and not only him but all the masters that crucify themselves in the past the knowledge is written there but if you read mechanically as people read the Bible mechanically they don't discover they think that Esau and Jacob were the sons of Isaac and Isaac the son of Abraham that lived many thousand years ago and they know that that is in their blood that is related with the work, psychological work, and alchemical work. Because the alchemical work is in relation with sexual magic, that, and also with the Eucharist. While the psychological work, of course, is a work of the annihilation of the ego. But we need help. If we are fornicators, like certain individuals that know the doctrine of the annihilation of the ego, they comprehend the ego, but they keep fornicating. So they are not following the priesthood of Yasad. So they are wasting their time. Other Gnostics, they follow the priesthood of, Yes of Yesod and meditate, but they reject the priesthood of Hod. So they are also wasting their time because without the help of Christ, no one, no one, no one goes to the Father. What is it meant by when we say there are millions of illiterate masters then? Hmm? What is it meant by when we say there are millions of illiterate masters? Millions of literal masters of... Illiterate means that uh, they don't know how to read and write, but they have knowledge. They the and they study the books internally as well. Because it doesn't mean that because you don't know how to read and write here, you, you cannot receive knowledge. But believe me, Esau likes to hunt for fame, praises, and forget about the study of the doctrine. It's better if you study the doctrine because the master's didn't write the books just for fun, you know what I mean? They came in order to write the books in order for you to study it. And if you are a priest, which means if you are a missioner, an instructor, you should study all the works of the master because you have a responsibility with the public. And if you don't know anything because you said only five books, and where is the rest of the doctrine? So then, then you are guiding the students to awake as a simoniacs. And the demoniacs will awake, of course, in the mental plane, in the world of Esau, but won't enter into the kingdom of heaven because we need to annihilate Esau. Esau can awake. Simon the magician was fortifying Esau. There are many Gnostics, there are many uh, people in this day and age that know about these mysteries and they practice sexual magic, but they ignore about the hierarchy, the new Christic current. The new Christic current, which is Samaelian Christic current, that expresses itself to the rituals. And in order to bring him down into the ritual, you need to be a priesthood in Yesod, to perform the priesthood of Yesod in chastity. And this is how you follow the path. This is why you have to understand and comprehend what is a priesthood. What was your question? Mm -hmm. um, and you said you mentioned that anyone who um, takes the bread during the Eucharist, you know, some feel like they're about to crumble. What if one takes the um, bread of the Eucharist and they don't feel they don't feel that crumbling sensation? Those that don't feel the crumble sensation is because, of course, they are working in themselves. The thing is that s some of them are identified with the Saul too much 
that they feel the pressure of the Akashic breath. Because the Akashic breath works against Lilith and Nahemah in Yesod. And if you are concentrated in your being, you feel that pressure against your animality in the sexual act of Yesod, priesthood of Yesod. And in the ritual of Hod, and you are faithful to the Lord, of course, that helps you and gives you enlightenment. But if you are devious in that, you feel that fights against that because it's the light of the Lord. The Lord don't mingle with the devil. And the devil is inside of us. So remember that because we have to, uh, to be faithful to the priesthood of Yesod, Chod, and the next lecture, which is the priesthood of Netzah, which is, of course, sacrifice for humanity. Do you have another question? Yes. Pressures? Well, the pressures are becoming for the hierarchy because the hierarchy comes from Aleph, from the breath of God that works through many masters. But in this moment, the hierarchy, the breath of God, the Nishama of God is working directly from Samael. And that pressure comes in order to help you to go up, but rejects because Samael is not going to take your ego up, but the negativity. So that pressure works in the sexual magic, in hod, and in all the work. You always find that pressure against the negativity, the negativity that you have within. This is Sophia in the archons. Yeah. The archons. the archons, of course, the archons are the, the law above that are working in favor of Pisti Sophia. But those archons also know the karma of every initiate. You read the Pisti Sophia, you will understand that. How the archons above are controlling that. And they, and they ma make her suffer. Pisces Sophia is, of course, the, the, the soul mingled with the forces of Christ. And that we have to be patient, because in this path you have to pay karma. And we need the help of, of the Lord in order to fight against our ego. Sometimes you uh, Gnostics ask to us, it's difficult to comprehend the ego in, the, in, the, in meditation. We advise them, take every day wine and bread of the Eucharist, invoke Samael, and he will help you to understand your ego. Don't forget your father and mother. Don't forget the prophet of Ra, Hor, Ku, who brings inside order in your disorderly house. So it is necessary. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,